What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Thank you for watching, listening to the number one ranked show, wherever it is that you listen to the podcast, whether it be the audio platform on Apple or Spotify, or you watching it old school on YouTube. Today, we get to debut a new series where we talk with several NFL draft hopefuls, starting today with former Georgia linebacker Nicobe Dean. In this conversation, Nicobe and I discuss his time at Georgia, why he picked Georgia over in state Ole Miss, Mississippi State. We talk a bit about him perhaps making history as a Butkus Award winner. And he tells us a really live story about Coach Smart that, well, fits right in. Also, want to add in here thanks for riding with us through the USFL Coaches Series. Very excited to cover the USFL. Very excited to share those coaches' interviews with you. We'll do some intermittent USFL content along with our regularly scheduled program, college football, NFL draft stuff, as you can see today. But please enjoy this conversation with Nakobe and look forward to other NFL draft show interviews. Let's talk to Nakobe. I'm pleased to be joined by former Georgia linebacker and national champion, Nakobe Dean. Nakobe, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank y'all for having me. Nah, man, I appreciate you joining up. Uh, just taking a look at your resume. It includes a Sugar Bowl, a Peach Bowl, an Orange Bowl, a college football national championship, being an All-American, winning the Buckets Award. But one of the things that I thought was most interesting about your journey is I went back to look at what you were saying when you were being recruited. And before committing to Georgia, uh, you told 247, anywhere I go, I have to work hard to get to the level that I want to play. This is just the next step in my journey. I'm trying to get as good as I can at college before I hopefully take the next step to the NFLs. To which my question is, do you think you maximized your potential in college? In college, I mean, I feel like it's, it, it's never a point where you can just say you was the best you, you ever was. You know, I feel like I left everything about it. I feel like um, all the work I put in, I, I left no no stones on turn. I worked hard, and then I have no regrets of uh, losing back on college. Um, but I, I could say that um, I definitely could have been better. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of things I could have worked on, a lot of things I could have did better in college. I'm not perfect. Well, I would like to know what those things are because I watched you play and you were a seek and destroy missile. So what do you what do you gotta improve, Doc? I'll be honest, I feel like every every aspect of my game can get better as far as technique with the hands, to covering, to blitzing, to uh to tackling, you know, uh, definitely at the next level everything become um everything become more uh, detail oriented. So it's like, you know, gotta gotta make sure I take the right steps uh quick. Uh, on the on the snap of his play action, I gotta get up out of there. So just little things like that, I feel like I can get better. At. How much of the defense were you responsible for once the call was communicated on the field? Uh, it, depending on the call, depending on the call, you we was the uh, linebacker, so we made all the checks. You know, it'll be a call like a a, a base call, coach seven quarters. You gotta make the you gotta make the call um, to the weak side with the safety in the corner to let them know what coverage you play if the tight end on ball, but well, it's a different coverage if you off the ball. So there's little things like that. Um <clears throat> that that we were responsible for setting the front, uh getting the calls in the back end. You know, Coach Schumann was my linebacker coach. He basically put that responsibility on us to um to get everybody lined up and get everybody to know what they're doing. So if if D B behind us bust and he was supposed to go to the middle of the field, he was supposed to come down and shoot, shoot he know they bust, but he'll be saying, "Did you tell him?" You know, so it was it was always a, a look at yourself uh, type of uh, defense first before we point any fingers. That's very interesting because uh, I got to hear Coach Schumann talk when DeAndre mm -hmm. Baker won the Jim Thorpe Award. He was the guy that was uh, present. Well, he was bringing DeAndre on to the podium, and his right. take was, "All the defensive backs want to be linebackers." Everybody knows this. And I thought that was funny, but it was also telling in that he's a detail oriented man. And he was pointing that out about DeAndre. And now hearing you speak about him saying, reflect on yourself first. I'm also looking at your game and yo, man, when people tell me about you watching film, you don't take false steps. You know where the fit is going to be. 
You know where you're going to be. And you also have a tendency to make your defensive coordinator look good by being right where the ball is. What are you doing in preparation to give yourself that advantage on the field? Man, we watch. I probably, me and uh, definitely me and Clay, as a practice, we watch probably an hour to two hours of uh, a film a week. You know, I feel like we just, we didn't watch. It wasn't a certain level of film we had to watch. It was, and we watched it and we felt like he was ready. You know, uh, we, we, we didn't want to go to a game, you know, questioning, not knowing what they do, what they like on first and second down or what they like on third down, third long, third and short. So we made sure we, we left like no stones on turn as far as that. So a lot of a lot of film study, a lot of um, listening to coach, a lot of practice, walk through, you know, taking it in, you know, from walk through can, can, can get a little bit monotonous. You know, you're just doing them all the time, but uh, you just got to make sure you lock in, you focus on them, you take some from every single one. I usually ask who do you model your game after to fellas like you who are hoping to get drafted in the NFL. But I'm also thinking I need to sharpen that in that, okay, what are you capable of doing? And then are you slotting correctly? So I'm going to ask it, but I'm also asking, give me a comp for you in the NFL that you also think, you know, height, weight, you fit. So so me personally, anytime I get this question, it's never nobody that I feel like I compare my game to, you know. Uh, I feel like I, I like to take, I like to watch different guys in the league or even guys in college, uh, and take little bits and pieces of their game and what they did and, and, and try to add to my game. See if it worked. Like the way you know Dez Leonard, the way he attacks the ball. You know, uh, Eric Kendricks, uh, his his zone coverage and man coverage. Um, Zach Cunningham, the way he comes down here and take on blockers and uh, run defense. Uh, Roquan Smith, the way he open field tackles in the passing and the effort he play with. So just things like that. I like to take bits and pieces of uh, everybody game kind of like try to uh, add it to mine. No, I think that's a great way to go about it. I'm also interested that you brought up Roquan because Mm -hmm. I'm an Oklahoma fan growing up, right? (laughs) So you already know, right? So when I'm watching you play against Alabama in particular, I got Roquan in the back of my head. Did you ever hear from him on your journey at Georgia? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, it was times he would come up to the facility we would talk. I wouldn't say that it was uh, just a regular thing where I just talked to him, but uh, I definitely had uh, contact with him if I wanted to uh, get at him, just shoot him a test or something, if I wanted to know something and things like that. So, yeah, we did have a uh, talk while I was in Georgia. Right on. So, my next question was, you know, going into the national championship game, and then you're playing in the national championship game, and you won the first national championship in 41 years at a school that we felt had been – waiting for this moment for that long. But it was also 18-13 Alabama with 10 minutes left. So I'm going to ask straight up, when Stetson put that ball on the carpet, what were you thinking? Um, I'm thinking we got to step up. Uh, yeah, I know exactly what the play you're talking about when they say it was a, a, a fumble and then he picked it up and he got it and they got in the red area. I'm thinking uh, we got to step up again. We knew we had them in. They had got down to the red area, what, three or four? Five times that we stopped them to head them to a field goal. So, but um, we just we just we we were so confident in what we can do and what we can win. Like um, no matter it was never a point in the game where I, that I even had the, the, the slight thought that we were going to lose that game. Or we were going. Uh, or even after that, it was like defense. It was like, all right, get everybody get ready. It's time to uh, bow our necks. You know, try to make the play for the offense. You know, and they definitely came back and um, made up for that. Uh, tenfold, so and we end up pulling out with the win. Man, you inch, you know, you felt confident, right? Look, man, you mm-hmm. ain't got no reason but to feel confident. I'm looking at what you did at Horn Lake, winning first state championship. You go to Georgia, and oh yeah, you you the linchpin on a team that wins a national championship. But I'm gonna ask you, which one means more to you, right? Winning that mm-hmm. national championship at Georgia, or leading Horn Lake to its first state championship? Man, um, I couldn't. I couldn't say which one. I couldn't even categorize them in the same things, you know. Um, just because they were both goals of mine, you know. Um, me, me personally, being um, say Georgia never won a national championship. I couldn't do nothing about that back in the day. But I could have worked from when I got there, twenty nineteen, to where I was there now, to possibly win a national championship. And we was able to do that. So. Same thing with Horn Lake. They just happened to never win one. I feel like my class, um, 
the, the, the guys I did it with um, at, at, at Horn Lake, I feel like we had that we had a, a strong connection because we had been friends and we had been buddies uh, since like sixth grade. So we had been like knowing each other, and a lot of them guys kind of grew up playing little league together and everything. So it was like we all kind of knew each other. We was friends. We were more friends outside of football than teammates. So it kind of changed when you get to uh, college. Everybody got their clicks. Everybody, you know. But I feel like this year, so to speak, we had a, a better connection all together. The connection piece. I feel like we became we became more more so friends instead of just like uh, coworkers, so to speak. You know, um, it wasn't so much so I could I could ask the the walk on left tackle, hey, how you feeling today? How class going? You know, you can ask him that. You can talk to him. It wasn't just so you see him in the hallway, you just walk past him. You say like, what's up? How you been? You know, things like that. So I feel like that that was the change from you know this year and you know past year. Also speaks to just what kind of environment as a, at Horn Lake. I'm gonna just go ahead and peel back the curtain a little bit. Hattiesburg is where I grew up from about age three to age ten. So Hattiesburg High means a lot to me. Oak Grove means a lot to me. But I'm familiar with them boys at South Panola and what they were able to do. Right. I didn't right. know about Horn Lake football until you started playing at Horn Lake, right? Right. Does do you feel that when you go back home? Um, so I, I mean, I haven't been home in a minute. I have been like, uh, I stuck my head in um, around Christmas. I was in the house all day, so I haven't been home and like been out and really been able to do anything uh, with my community. It's been, it's been a minute, uh, but anytime I go home, I kind of do feel it. I kind of do feel it. It's, it. It came to the point where like, um. I'm at home out and I feel like I want to go back to to my high school or to my elementary school and um and meet and you know meet and talk to those kids like because I feel like growing up I didn't have that person to look up to, so to speak. Like um he where I wanted to be. He where I, yeah, I want to be when I grow up. So what 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 can he do? How can I pick his uh pick his brain and things like that to ask him like what uh what was the you know basically the formula. And um so I feel like anytime I go back and I talk to those uh, those middle schoolers or or high schoolers or the, or the guys at the, or the boys and girls at the boys and girls club, it's just like I tell them like I want y'all to be better than me. You know, I want y'all to get to my point, uh, get to my point, and you know, uh, just be like, okay, I made it. It's more so whatever I do, I want y'all to excel and exceed over me. And I'm gonna make it hard for you because I, I want to be the greatest to ever do it. You know, I'm gonna keep on continue to try to. Uh, elevate me as a person, as a game, uh, as a football player, as a person in in life and business and all things. So um, this is just kind of my message going back home. Man, that's what's up. That's a great message to give those kids. I also got to ask though, you end up in Georgia. Folks yeah. want to know how you not end up at Ole Miss or Mississippi State, dog. So um, definitely, uh, I was I was definitely consider staying in state. Um, I, I when people think I didn't have like a serious consideration for them, but I did. But it, it had did come to a point um, where I had like kind of realized myself during the season, taking all my visits, that I felt like um, I need to become, I need to mature a little bit more as an individual, and I, and I didn't need to be around so much so my friends that I grew up with. Not saying that that was a bad influence any type of way, but I felt like um, it was times where I felt like I needed to. Uh, Find out who who myself was as a, a as an individual. You know, I feel like I had to open. I needed to open up a little bit more socially uh, to help me in the future be able to talk to people and things like that. And so I feel like I needed to get away from home a little bit. And I, and I had one 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 uh, day I kind of prayed, took a nap, woke up. You know, Coach Smart was the first person to call me, but it was at the back of my mind like the whole time. So it kind of felt like a gut feeling. So I ended up, you know. I ended up uh, picking George. They was mad, though. I tell you what, the old, uh, not so much Mississippi State fans weren't mad at all, but old Miss fans, oh, my goodness. They was mad. Hey, man, let them be mad. It's fine. <laughs> it's all right. Let old Miss be yeah. mad. Look, I, I'm saying that. Like, look, look, my mama a golden eagle, right? So I ain't got no dog yeah. in that fight up there. But let them yeah. be mad for reasons. Yeah. For, for reasons. <laughs> so you end up at Georgia, right? And mm -hmm. what I've heard from you in picking Georgia is you wanted a chance to develop right not just as a football player but as a human being find out who you are and find out what you believe i gotta ask though who do you think is most responsible for helping you develop at georgia 
at Georgia. Oh my goodness. Um, I feel like um, you know, outside of my uh, people at home that I call my mother, my father, my, my homeboys, I say the biggest people for me is probably my. Um, I wouldn't even say my. I mean, of course, my coaches helped me develop on the field. Um, all my instructors and uh, professors they helped me develop in the classroom. But I feel like what I did the most uh, development at is um, it's like social. You know, my uh, I feel like my teammates and my uh, my guys that you know learned the. Uh, learned to love, I feel like they kind of, you know, uh, us all being able to get each other and shake each other's hands and get to know new people from from everywhere, from Cali to Vegas to uh, Maine. You know, we had all type of people on the team. So just being able to just talk to people and see what type of different people beliefs and everything, because people believe in different things, you know, kind of in high school, bro, we all kind of grew up the same. Everybody kind of had the same beliefs. Everybody talked the same. Everybody kind of thought the same. You know, I got and I come to Georgia, and everybody is it's a whole different ball game. You know, um, so just just being able to uh, make those connections I had with my teammates and what the places they was able to connect me or the people they was able to connect me with, just being in in, in Georgia in Atlanta, coming from Mississippi, where it's like, you know, you might not not might not might not be that many people you can meet and everything. So just being just being there and uh, meeting all those new people just opened me up socially. Hey man, Athens is a big place, and I think that gets overlooked. Yeah. I've, I've been there, and I was there for mm-hmm. Notre Dame traveling to Sanford, and it still is my favorite experience at a college football game. And remember, I've been to Oklahoma to see a game. Like it's that was outstanding, especially being played at night, and they did this thing with the lights at the fourth quarter. It's just a lot of fun. It's the most memorable game that I've ever seen from a Georgia perspective. I, I, I want to know I from you. Go ahead. I remember that game. I say, hey, look, it, it looked like it was done. And then in the fourth quarter, <laughs> looked like y'all was trying to give it back just a little bit. Yeah, trying yeah, to make it a little know. bit more entertaining. <laughs> but I was going to uh, ask, yeah. what is the most memorable game that you have played in at Georgia? Outside of National Championship? <laughs> Outside, well, I'm saying at Sanford, excuse me. Okay, at Sanford, uh, it it might I, I might have to so we didn't have we didn't have that many home like like prime time home games and shit like I don't know why we had like one night game in South Carolina but um, I feel like the the game you talk about that um, Notre Dame game I think it was my I think it was my first game my first game in Stanford I was a freshman um. I, it, was my, it was my first night game, my first game period at Stanford, and it was a night game, and it was against Notre Dame. And I'm thinking, like, man. So I, I didn't know what to expect. I had been to a game before, but, you know, being in the crowd, being a recruit, like, I wanted, I wanted to get out the cold. So I'm inside. I'm not getting the full effect of it. But I remember that fourth quarter. On the, I remember being out, being on the field at last play. I think we was, like, in a cover six or something like that. But. I just remember the crowd. I couldn't even hear myself think. I couldn't, like, you kind of hear yourself breathe. I couldn't even hear myself breathe or nothing because the crowd was just so loud. And I remember just kind of, like, stopping and looking like, dang. Like, I ain't never been to nothing with this many people, with this crowd ever. So I feel like that was probably one of my uh, most memorable games. Hey, man, and it's, it's a great one. Like, I, I have memories yeah. of my own, like, Standing next to the hedges, I dapped up Ric Flair, mm-hmm. I dapped up uh, Trinidad James, I dapped up oh, yeah. uh, Rich Homie Quan. Like it was, Champ Bailey was out there, you know. Oh, yeah. We we had uh, I think Omar from uh from Power, yeah. you know. Yeah, he, like it was, he, he went there. but yeah, he played it there. I think yeah. he played there too, right? Yeah, yeah, he played there too. Yeah, so I'm just. It was such a big deal for me, uh, and I'm glad to know that I'm not the only person that had that experience because I remember that crowd pop too. It was. No other feeling like it, quite honestly. So back to some transactions taking place on the field. I want to know from a Georgia football player what it feels like to have Jermaine Burton, who won a national championship at Georgia, Mm -hmm. up and transfer to Alabama. So I'll be honest, I don't know the whole like whole whole reason why he he wanted to transfer. And I, you know, I didn't feel like it was my place to ask, you know. Uh, but just because he he left and wanted to go to another school. They don't. They don't kind of. They didn't change a lot. Of, a lot of people on the team. It didn't. 
I mean, we didn't. didn't I, I can tell you that at least from the people I talked to that was that's on the team and was on the team before, no ill will. Because just because we know we know how how it is, we know that you want to be uh, you want to max, maximize yourself to the best of your ability. If you feel like you can go to go to another school and do that, we gonna um, we gonna support you tenfold just because. That's, I mean, that was our brother. We just won a national championship together. I call him our brother. Uh, and you think I'm going to basically ex- exile him just because he wanted to choose another school? Not like he going against us and saying we sucked or something. So it's like, you know, um, it, I mean, it's not. We supported him, basically. No, and I can get with that, right? And that would be, I hope, most people's outlook. But, you know, people are going to do what people do. But I wanted yeah. to get at it in this way. Y'all loaded up, man. Like, y- 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 y'all loaded up. Everybody everybody you're playing against is loaded up. But I've seen George yeah. Pickens out there. I've seen Darnell Washington out there. I got to yeah. ask you, man, what was it like going to practice against some of these dudes? Like I said, I always say practice is harder than the game. You know, just being out there. Man, big, I don't feel like people even, like you said, Darnell, I don't think people have gotten full effect. Like, Darnell Washington, how big he actually is being out there and, and blocking and receiving. But um, just going against like going against guys like James Cook, Jameer White, uh, Brock Bowers, um, George Pickens in practice set us up to go and get some of the best. Like I feel like the uh, the balance we had in practice helped us in the game because it's just because like it's not too many people better in the in the nation uh, that we can play against that's gonna be better than the guys we're playing against at practice. I feel like. Just having to practice against them day in and day out just just helped us out tremendously. I'm going to put a bow on that right quick. Uh, Fox Sports NFL draft analyst Rob Rang believes that all 11 of the dudes that or 10 dudes that you played with on that defense are going to get drafted. So y'all were given as, as well as y'all got. But mm-hmm. one of the things that I've always appreciated about what George has been able to be over the last five years going into year six with Coach Smart is – just how in on the program each one of y'all are. And again, that starts with him. Whenever we get to see this man, he is animated on the sidelines. He is animated in a press conference. Do you have a favorite story you can tell us about Coach Smart being in his element? Oh, I could. Uh, I, I, I say my favorite story probably it was it happened during like springtime. I think it was, I think it was my, I, no, I think it was during camp. My, my freshman year going into camp, I can't remember. It was somewhere around that time. It was in practice, and Coach Landon called some call. Coach Landon called some call. It was freshman year. It was camp. Coach Landon called some call that, that I feel like I think we busted or it didn't work or something, and Coach, Coach Mark kind of lost it. He was mad. His name, he took the script. He kind of he wiped like his butt with it and just threw it. And he was like, throw that, throw it in, you know, in garbage, basically. He was like, don't do it. Yeah, don't never call it again. And Coach Landon, you know, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. But then on the script, he was supposed to call it again. So he called it the, the next play, the exact next play. But uh that I probably that was probably one of my uh one of my favorite Coach Smart moments uh since I was at uh Georgia. Does he gas y'all up as much as it seems to be? Because I've seen some tape of him at practice and when a ball is in the air it's as if that man is playing the ball himself he's playing defensive back himself is he that animated when the ball is in the air every time y'all playing yeah he is um you know what what y'all what y'all see on the uh sideline at the games is congruent to what he is at practice every day he 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 in your face he animated he on you um good on good he talking about it. he got the mic in his hand so Everybody gonna hear you talking, him talking about you. So it's like you can't, you can't, you couldn't have soft skin. I won't say that he just kind, of, he just like destroyed people, but can't have soft skin. You know, uh, that's kind of how he, uh, that kind of how he is. That's his personality. He, uh, he like to be involved, and yeah, I, I love it. You know, I love him uh, being all the raw, raw, you know, in your face, uh, just because you know. For me, I knew it was coming from a good place. You know, he could be on you. I remember freshman year, he'd be on me. Bam, I'm talking about spring practice. I was just learning the playbook. I'm messing up. He on bad. I'm thinking, man, this man must hate me. <laughs> uh, thinking like, man, he must hate me. But you know, and we in the we in the hallway. He see me. 
Yeah, how you doing? Your class is going good. This that. It's like he he said it's a part. It's not you, you got to learn like it's not personal. You know, it's just he trying to make you better on the field. So um, I feel like, but what you see is is what it is. It, it's not fake at all. Hey man, like one of the things I thought was most interesting about this team the last couple of years is the addition of Coach Cochran who has mm-hmm. this aura and this personality for being live himself, right? That man is mm-hmm. wide and over the top. Who do you think gets liver? Is it Coach Cochran or is it Coach Smart? Uh, I, I'm hot to give it to Coach Smart just because I was with him. I was with Coach Smart for longer. Coach Cochran Coach came in like halfway through it. But uh, there's definitely uh, – Coach Cock definitely my guy, you know, definitely my guy. But I got to give it to Coach – I got to give it to Coach Smart. Last question for you, and we get up out of here. Uh, They introduced the high school and pro categories for the Buckets Award in 2008. You're just one of three players to win the award in high school and college, the others being Manti Teo and Jalen Smith, both went to Notre Dame. There also have been three players who have won it in college and in the NFL, right? Patrick Willis, Von Miller, Luke Keekley. No one has won all three. What would it mean for you to perhaps be come with some effort with some effort the first person to win all three buckets awards no it, it mean a lot it mean a lot it was um it's definitely something that that i that not everybody made it like you know on my radar that, that i'm striving to become you know, i'm trying i'm trying to be the best player i could possibly be in the, in the league you know, i'm trying to be one of the best linebackers that do it so uh as long as as long as i'm working towards that uh, me and one of the best linebackers ever do it. Appreciate sure everything that's going to fall in place. Oh, man, that's a great place to leave it. Former Georgia linebacker and NFL draft hopeful, N'Kobe Dean. N'Kobe, thank you so much for your time, sir. Hey, thank y'all for having me. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.